Hey guys, we are in the basement. Today we're gonna do a John's Arcade game a play a review. Uh, that is right, guys. Now listen, we're also gonna do some other stuff. We'll do some viewer mail at the end here. I also wanna thank you guys for some gifts that you sent me. Maybe we'll do a little show and tell. That's right, because you know what? It is just after Christmas. I hope you guys had a great holiday. I did. I love Christmas, come on. But anyway, we're down here again, and uh, well, the, the new year is coming soon, guys, and I actually have a lot of time off. And uh, so I'm hoping to do a bunch of videos the next week here, and uh, that's kind of the plan. I know you guys have been asking me uh, uh, where the videos are, by the way. I know. I, I, took, I took some time off, you know. I, I, I took Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and, and the day after, and I did nothing. That's okay, right? Come on, I, I can do nothing. <laughs> I just kind of chilled out and uh, so this is our first uh, post Christmas video and uh, in this video too we're doing something a little different we are filming in 60p this is kind of an experiment I don't know or think it's gonna be the norm but right now I'm filming 60 frames per second and I want to just see how this goes. Uh, it's the first time I've ever done a video uh, 60 frames per second. Uh, YouTube now supports this as, a, as an option. And I thought we'd try it. Uh, it is going to make the file size larger for me. It's going it, to create a little more editing time, bouncing time. But uh, I'd like to try it maybe for gameplay videos, which is what this video is going to be. And in this video, we're going we're gonna to review uh, a game I did a video for a long time ago. Uh, like one of the very first videos I ever did. So I'd like to do a proper versus Super Mario, Mario Brothers video, okay? And, and also, you know what? It's Christmas time and, and nothing says Christmas to me more than Nintendo and Mario. I, I, I think it's safe to say that I have gotten some sort of Nintendo item for Christmas since I've been, oh, 15 years old. I mean, think about that. I, I probably have gotten some kind of Nintendo thing since I've been 15 for Christmas. It's, it's probably the single most requested category by me for Christmas. This year, I got uh, my wife picked me up a Bayonetta 2 for the Wii U. I, I played like the first couple levels. I'm blown away by it. I got a bunch of, uh, of the Amiibos, you know, the little Amiibo guys. I got, uh, she got me Mario, uh, Samus, and... Uh, and Link, and Link, uh, from the first wave. And by the way, those Amiibos have gotten a little stupid, because I, I really want Little Mac, and uh, can't can't find him. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, whatever. I got some of that stuff, so wh what did you guys get for Christmas? Anything good? <laughs> so, But anyway, uh, yes, I mean, Nintendo to me is Christmas, and I thought Mario would be a nice festive game to play. I, I know it's the day after, it's a couple days after Christmas here, but I'm still in the Christmas mood. And also, I've been wanting to revisit Versus Super Mario Brothers simply because, it, it, again, it was one of the first videos I ever did. And it was on my old crappy camera at 320p. So we're really going to step up our game here. We're going to film this in 1080p, 60 frames per second. Uh, if you guys are on Chrome, uh, on the on the computer, you'll be able to select 60 frames per second. I don't know about other viewing. Uh, you know, if you watch this on your PlayStation or on your Xbox, uh, I, I don't know if you're going to be able to see the 60 frames per second. But if you're on Chrome, I know that you will be able to see that as an option. So we'll see how this goes. You guys, tell me, does this video look good? Um, so we're going to do some uh, some versus Super Mario gameplay. And then also, afterwards, we're gonna come back to the table. I wanna do viewer mail, and I also wanna do a little show and tell, uh, cause you guys did send me some really awesome stuff, uh, a couple guys in particular. And uh, I just wanna kinda show you guys some of the stuff I got, cause uh, one guy in particular, Chucky Egg, uh, he really loaded me up on some badass shit. So <laughs> we're gonna watch that in a, in a little bit. But first, let's play versus Super Mario. So. Uh, this is a Nintendo versus game. Now, Nintendo versus is is some of my favorite hardware. Period. Um, it's kind of what started me uh, in this hobby in a way because you know first I had Donkey Kong, then I had I, I don't know but one of the first I had Donkey Kong then and then I got Miss Pac Man and the Mario Brothers 
And then uh, soon after, in the very beginning, in like the first year, I picked up a red tent. And I'll show you that in a second, which is a Nintendo versus dual system. Now, what's cool about the versus dual system, which you guys probably already know, but it's like the NES games, but different. It's like more like arcade versions of the NES games. Now, the Play Choice 10 that Nintendo put out in the arcades is an NES. There's no difference in the games. They are the NES games. Uh, the Play Choice 10 is essentially an NES uh, with a timer, okay? The Nintendo Versus stuff, that's not the case. The Versus stuff are actually modified versions. They're not the same. And Versus Super Mario Brothers is one of those games. It is different than the NES game. And we'll show you guys how. It's actually, uh, I, I believe it's the same as uh, like the Super Mario Lost Levels that was on that uh, compilation cartridge that Nintendo released. Um, they released that cartridge for the Super Nintendo, right? Yeah. The, it, it, had the, it had the Lost Levels on there. Also, I think it's also was called Super Mario Brothers 2 in Japan. And it's essentially very similar to the NES release, except it's harder. And in the beginning, it's not as obvious that it's different. And, and as you get deeper into the game, the jumps start getting higher, harder and wider. It's, it's just a much tougher game. And it's actually a lot of fun to play. So we're going to play that. And so again, this is a versus uh, PCB. I'll just kind of show you guys the hardware real quick. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, think of this board as uh, a computer, okay? And uh, this computer holds two cartridges, okay? But the cartridges are actually uh, it, in EEPROM. So what a cartridge, what a game is, is it's a PPU, which is this picture processing unit, which is like a, I know I've covered this stuff before, but I, I feel obligated to do it again for the guys that don't remember or haven't seen those other videos. So. All right, so think of this as a, a, a computer, okay? Like two NESs, okay? And it's got a sections on it for two different games, okay? So on this side, I have Versus Super Mario, okay? And the game itself that you put in here are these six EEPROMs, one, two, three, four, five, six. This picture processing unit, which is kind of a security chip that is unique to this game and also a few others. If you go to my website, NintendoVS.com or JohnsArcade.com, I list which of these PPUs work with which games. And so this PPU is an RP, RP2C010004. It works with Super Mario with these ROMs. You could also change these out and put Ice Climber in here and it, it would work still. Just change these six, e, six EEPROMs. And then we have a CPU, which is the RP2A03. Okay, so this is your typical uh, versus game right here. Six EEPROMs, a PPU, and a CPU. Now, Konami did something different, and so did some Nintendo games. Actually, this is the only one. This is Dr. Mario. Okay, so on this side, I have Dr. Mario. And Nintendo released Dr. Mario on a daughter board. They did not release the six EEPROMs. Instead, they put everything on this daughter board. So our PPU is here, our CPU, and then this game uses two EEPROMs, but they are bigger EEPROMs. One is a 27256, the other is a 27512, whereas this one uses four 2764s, which are smaller. These have smaller capacity. So Mario Brothers over here is on six smaller capacity uh, EEPROMs, and then Dr. Mario is on two larger capacity EEPROMs, PPU and CPU, and then that just goes here and you leave the, uh, the uh, EEPROMs unpopulated. Now, since I have a versus dual system, I can take advantage of both sides of this board. Okay, so we can play, we can have two games in the unit. We can have Mario on one side and Dr. Mario on the other. Now, I have batteries installed here because my friend Matt, Matt Osborne actually modified the Super Mario ROMs to save the high scores. And he uses the batteries, the battery holder. That, by the way, all Versus boards have a battery holder. The only function for these AA battery holders is to save bookkeeping functions, functions like, you know, the number of credits played, uh, you know, I, you know, I have to say, I don't think I've ever been into a menu where I saw the actual bookkeeping functions, but I've been told and, or read that these batteries actually save the bookkeeping uh, information, like uh, how many times the game was played, you, you know, they might have, you know, uh, uh, how many times did someone get a high score, you know, stuff like that. Um, so Matt Osborne took advantage of the fact that there are a, there's a battery holder on here, and he uses this power to keep these chips alive 
and keep the high scores saved. Um, and if you have a versus Super Mario setup, this is a must have. You gotta get this modified ROM and HobbyROMs.com could burn this for you. Um, but if you don't have modified ROMs, there's no reason to keep batteries on these boards. Pull them off, throw them out, and just keep this empty. It's not gonna affect the function of this board at all. Um, in fact, this is the only board I have with batteries uh, because of this. Actually, Balloon Fight 2, I think, has batteries because uh, 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 Suzilla modified that. So anyway, why don't we go over to the to the uh, dual system and put this in and let's play a little versus Super Mario. Are you excited, guys? <laughs> and by the way, right now in the versus uh, red tent, it, yes, this is the red tent. And by the way, if you had a, a, a unit system, which uh, is a single monitor uh, unit. Now, this is a dual monitor versus, okay? So I got one monitor on this side. And if we come over here, we have another monitor. So I've got two boards on... I've got two games on this PCB. I've got Castlevania, which is fantastic, and uh, Goonies, which is also amazing. I actually really like Goonies. I was actually thinking about playing Goonies today, and I decided to do Mario because I had a couple guys ask me to do a Mario video, so why not? Everyone loves Mario. We'll, we'll revisit versus the Goonies because that's a really good game, too. That's actually different than the NES version. I believe that was only released on the Famicom, this version that's on here. So anyway... And it's Goonies. Come on, how cool is that? All right, so let's come over here. And, uh, and what, what I was about to say, though, is if you have a single monitor uh, uh, a versus system, which would be called a unit system, and they made conversion kits for Donkey Kong cabinets. They also had a dedicated one. Um, but you'll see a lot of Donkey Kong cabinets with, like, Super Mario Brothers in it. It basically has this PCB, except only one side is populated. And I think it's actually the sixth side, which is this side here. So you'd only populate this side. Now, the thing with Super Mario Brothers, though, if you populate only one side, you need to have a CPU on this side. And this kit actually came with a dummy CPU. Or you could put another RP2803 over here. Um, so if you, if you have a verse unit system and you want to put Mario Brothers in there, just keep in mind that you need a second CPU on this side. Even though there's no game over here, you need to put a CPU in this socket. All right, so let's go ahead and put this game in. I might have to cut the video here. I'm actually getting thirsty. <laughs> go get a soda or something. All right, let me turn this off. And, uh, oops. And, you know, I love this system so much. I mean, I just really, truly dig it. And uh, it's, it's a fun system to own because of all the games. It, it, it's just... And, and if you go on my site again, NintendoVS.com, I've really documented how you can convert games into other games and, and it's all about those PPUs. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull this board out. Now remember I said Konami used daughter boards and we have two Konami games in here right now and this is the board. So we had uh, versus Castlevania and then versus Goonies and they're both on daughter boards as you can see. And I think they did that to cut down on piracy. Made, made this game as, as proprietary as possible. And Castlevania actually goes for big bucks. I actually converted a Top Gun into Castlevania. I've had dedicated Castlevanias, but um, I had a Top Gun. I just didn't really care for it, so I converted it to Castlevania by burning a new EEPROM and then putting in an RP 2C04002 CP, uh, PPU, which is also the same as uh, Versus Slalom. So... Again, NintendoVS.com. I've got videos up there explaining how all this stuff works. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, put this board in. And uh, these are, you know, it's pretty easy to change games. I recommend, though, if you're going to swap games often, don't swap the chips. Don't swap the EEPROMs. Uh, get yourself a bunch of boards and, and populate them with the games. So, all right, let's come in here. And there's basically just two edge connectors. And of course, I have the cabinet off. You know, you don't want to do this with it on. All right, so we just do two plugs right there. So let's go ahead and shut it. And let me turn it on. And hopefully everything works. Okay, so we've got Dr. Mario on this side. And then on this side, we should have Super Mario Brothers. Okay, so why don't we play us a game of Nintendo versus Super Mario Brothers.
Okay, we have the uh, tripod set up here, and, and, and you know, this is gonna look pretty good, I think, because we're, we're filming this at 60 frames per second, so the camera can keep up now with the refresh rate. And I don't, I don't think I was having trouble before with the 30 frames per second. Uh, actually, before I was filming at 60i, which is 60 frames interlaced, and we were netting out at 30 frames. So this is actually true 60 frames per second. And so I think the image here is gonna be really crisp because um, it can absolutely keep up with the refresh of the monitor. Anyway, okay. Tell me what you guys think of this. Is it worth the trouble to do this for the gameplay vids? I don't know. All right, so I wanna show you guys the controls, okay? And you'll notice right away that it's a little bit different than the NES because the NES had D-pads, okay? And when I first got this game, when I first got Versus Super Mario, I thought to myself, there's no way I'm going to be able to play Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers with a joystick. Are you kidding me? I mean, the only way to play this game is with a D-pad. Well, you know what? I, I think that's actually not true because I've played so many games now with this joystick it's the only way I can play Mario. I, if I go on NES and try to play it, it's weird. I love this joystick. And I actually feel like really in control of the game. And so we have a, uh, an eight-way joystick. Uh, and we have two sets of them. We have a left and a right player. Um, since we're going to be playing a one-player game, we can use either side. If we played two players, one player would get one side, one would get the other. Um, of course, it's not a cooperative, uh, simultaneous game, so we would switch off. I'd go, then you'd go, and you know, etc. Um, there are there is an a, a and a B button, which is jump and run. You know, typical Mario Brothers controls. I'm sure you guys all know them. And then over here, we've got four buttons uh, because this cabinet supports games up to four players. Uh, however, this game only up to two players, so you can play one or two players. And we're of course we're going to play a one-player game. All right, so let me turn the light off and let's get this camera in a good spot and let's let's try to have a somewhat okay game of mario i i don't i i really doubt i'll get to the end and to be honest truthfully i don't think i have ever gotten to the end on this version I, i've made it to the eights to world eight something but i've never actually finished uh versus super mario because it is very hard and if you're used to the nes version like i am it's actually quite challenging. So, all right, let me let me pull up a chair here and see if I can squeeze in without disrupting the camera. And I'm going to go ahead and start a one-player game. And I, I again, I have Matt Osborne's little hack in here. But I wonder if I should turn those lights off. What do you guys think? Yeah, let me let me turn those off. Let's get rid of that glare. Let's plug this here. Is that better? Okay, so, uh, yeah, again, I got Matt, Osborne, Matt Osborne's little hack in here, which adds free play and also saves the high scores. So let's, let's go ahead and start a one-player game. Okay, so B, of course, is, makes you run. A is jump. And we are small Mario right now. And I know this is all elementary to you guys, but you know what? If you've never seen Super Mario, this is it. I mean, this is the game that started it all. <laughs> I mean, it's not Mario's first game. You know, that's Donkey Kong. But it's definitely the one that made him a rock star. And it's funny, you know, if you look at Mario Brothers, the arcade game, not, not Super, just regular Mario, you'll see some foreshadowing. You can see where Miyamoto was, was taking uh, Mario. And, you know, that game basically is this game except without scrolling and he must have had the wise idea to basically take the mario brothers formula and make it scroll instead of being trapped on one screen but like the pipes and all that stuff i mean that's all in, in mario brothers arcade which I have, I have over there i can show you guys that afterwards if you want so anyway first level not too much different than the nes i think it's exactly the same i think i'm just gonna blow through this stuff Ugh. I missed my little bonus there. Now I know there's many little deep secrets and Easter eggs, you know, like if I would jump down the flag with a certain time, I got the fireworks and, and I, by the way, I did get the fireworks by accident because I don't even remember what, th what that was. All right, second level. And hopefully we'll have a decent game. I don't know. I never seem to have a very good game when I do these videos. <laughs> Every now and then I get a little lucky. Alright, so B is now our fireball. Should we go down here? 
It's funny how this game is so old and it's still so playable and the graphics still seem crisp to me. It doesn't seem fuzzy. You know, it's weird. It's like you, you see like a PlayStation 1 game and, you know, that stuff has not held up. But these, these games have, you know, and is it because, you know, people are still trying to make 8-bit looking games on the iPhone and the iPad and Android? Is that why? Is that why this still looks decent? Because no one's trying to make bad looking 3D games, which is essentially what like the PlayStation looks today. But people are still trying to make these awesome sprite based games. So I, I'm just gonna blast through this. And by the way, when, when, when I was a kid, I got this, when I had this game, you know, I mean, I was 15 when I got my NES. And, uh, you know, the fact that you can go up to the top and be by the score, I mean, come on, dude, that, that shit blew my mind. Okay, so that right there is different. On the NES version, I, I'm pretty sure there's not a space there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go to warp four, which was always my move. Because I want to get to eight. All right. All right, let's just get through this. I, I actually totally hate this. This is like my least favorite level in the game. This and those Hammer Brother guys on like the eight. All right, so the, the jumps are going to start getting a little crazy here, I think. I think this is where we start really noticing. The thing is, admittedly, I haven't played the NES version in so long. So you guys might notice stuff that I'm not noticing that's different. Because this is the only version I play now. I, I don't even bother with the NES version. Ugh. All right, let's just clear this. I don't know, is that gap different? Yeah, I know, I'm missing everything on purpose. <laughs> I just want you guys to see this game. All right, so we're on World 4-2. I think this is, this is where, nah, I think it's like 4, I don't remember. We'll, we'll see. I think that gap is different. I'm not sure. Oh, my God. You guys tell me. Because the gaps start getting wider and bigger and stuff. Great. So I don't know, they're hidden something here, right? Shit. Oh man, there's a vine right here. Can I get to it? I mean, I mean that kind of stuff was just crazy talk. I mean, the hidden stuff, I mean, it's just absolute genius. All right, so here's a little bonus level. Chance for us to maybe get a free life. Oh, that's actually another warp. That's right. Okay, so we're going to six. I don't know if that was a good idea or not. <laughs> ah, I think the other warp was at the end of 4-2. I don't remember. Yeah, this is where it starts getting really hard. Oh, this stupid guy. I hate that fucker. That guy and those damn Hammer Brothers, those are the worst enemies in this game. Boy, I haven't played this in a long time. I don't even remember what I'm supposed to do. Is there anything up here? Is there any reason to do this? I don't think so. Probably just to kill him. I want a mushroom. Don't fall! Okay. Okay. Alright. Yeah, 
I know I'm probably playing this all wrong and I'm going the wrong way and I missed the shortcuts and I did the wrong warps. <laughs> I'm sure I did all of that. <laughs> the thing is, when I was younger, man, I knew like everything about this game. I mean, there wasn't a time where I couldn't, I mean, there was a time in my life when I could, I could sit down and always finish this game on the NES. Oh, do I even want to bother with that? Let's just get out of here. And you can play this version in Maine, by the way. Oh no, the water. Ah, oh, stupid squid. Just get out of here. No. So that's a big scary gap. I don't know if that's in the original or not. Don't fall on the plant! <laughs> Come on! Uh. I'm starting to fall apart here. <laughs> I can sense it already. I'm over my head at 6 2. Alright, we're at the end. I remember it was World 4 2, you can get like endless lives with a turtle coming down the, the stairs. I think it was 4 2, I don't remember. Boy, that was lame. So how are we doing? What do you think? You like it? <laughs> uh. All right, we got these springy things. Okay, this is gonna be nerve-wracking. Jesus Christ. All right, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> where, where do I go? Seriously, where do I jump? Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> that I'm pretty sure that was not how the NES one was. I have to blindly jump and then hope to land on that turtle? Oh shit. No, 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 no. Okay, this is just stupid. Alright, so I have to hope that the turtle is... Ah! Come on! There is no way to do that! <laughs> See, that, that, the NES, I don't remember the NES ever being like that. I mean, come on, that is impossible. I mean, that's even. <laughs> so as you can see, it's a little different, I think, right? The NES wasn't like that. Oh, it does save scores, right? Because of Matt Osborne's little mod. So that was, uh, well, that's my highest game that I've recorded on here. Crazy. It does have continues. I, I don't think we're going to continue. I mean, that's basically it, guys. What'd you think? I mean, it's a cool version. I mean, do you like it? I, I think it's pretty badass. So, anyway, uh, what do you guys want to do? Let's let's do some viewer mails. And yeah, I know. The, the damn 720. You, you know what's going on here? I don't remember what I talked about in the last video, but I, I think I've diagnosed the issue and I'm not positive, but I might have not diagnosed the original issue properly. Um, I think the issue I have right now is resistor 811, which controls the contrast circuit. I researched this. I found some people talking about it. It's a common issue with the, with the 7500 monitors, and I need to replace that resistor. So we're going to do that in an upcoming video. Um, and I did do a tube swap, and I'm wondering if I... Did, if I needed to do that at all, or if we had if we had compound problems, I don't know. We'll never know. Um, so we've got a new tube in here. We still have issues. The picture looks like it's black and white. Um, I, I believe that's resistor 811. So I don't know. We're gonna work on that. Honestly, I'm just so disgusted by the topic. I don't even want to think about it. I mean, the thought of pulling that monitor out it, it just it just sounds like torture to me. So it it really does. So. All right, let's go over here. I want to do some viewer mails. And, and by the way, guys, this is not my Sunday video. This is like a bonus video 
Um, again, we're gonna be doing a, a bunch of videos here this week, and uh, I think the Sunday video tomorrow, because I believe tomorrow is the last Sunday of the year, so I think we should uh, maybe do our year-end review tomorrow. What do you guys think of that? You guys wanna do that tomorrow? You wanna do that? <laughs> so, so today uh, is a little bonus gameplay video, I, uh, an experiment too, because I wanted to try the whole 60p thing. And, uh, but I printed some viewer mails. Also, I, I, I do need to thank you guys because, uh, first of all, this guy, Tony Scoots, uh, he saw the, the video when we went to Chicago and uh, we went to Gene and Jude's and we had a hot dog and, uh, Scoots emailed me uh, and he said, hey man, John, my family has a uh, an Italian deli and bakery called Scudero's, Italian bakery in Melrose Park, uh, uh, on West Lake Street in Melrose Park. Uh, and he said, John, can I send you like a little goodie bag? And, uh, you know, I'm Italian, you know, and I said, hey, you know, you guys make any jardinier over there? <laughs> and he said, yeah, we do actually. And he sent me some. See if I can find it. Where, where did I put it? So he sent me a, a little Italian uh, a pepper, which uh, I had around my neck as a kid because my, my mother was Italian. He sent me a, a pretty cool T-shirt. Where's this damn jardinier? We actually had some of it Christmas because on Christmas, uh, oh come on, where is it? Because on Christmas uh, we uh, we make homemade uh, raviolis. And we always eat our pasta and all that with uh, with jardinera. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here it is. This is a hot jardinera. It's a pepper mix. And it's very popular in Chicago. See that there? And it's like peppers, sport peppers and carrots and cauliflower. And it's really, you know, kind of chopped up finely. It's actually typically put on Italian beef sandwiches. And uh, this is actually something that I could not find when I moved out here. When I was a kid, my grandpa made homemade jardinera. And, uh, you know, I grew up eating this on pasta. Now, this is hot. Tony also sent me a mild. He sent me some Italian cookies, these Pizzella cookies, which are like Anna's cookies my mom used to make and still makes. Um, this stuff's great. Seek this out. Uh, you know, actually, Aldi, you guys know Aldi, the discount store? They actually have a really good one, too. Um, but it's only available in the Chicago area. The Aldis around here don't carry it. Um, or if you're in Melrose Park, hey, man, go to Scudero's. So, Tony, thank you, man. Merry Christmas, bro. That was awesome. And we had that with our Christmas dinner. It was delicious. It's hot, too, man. Nice and crisp, also. All right. So, I, I mean, I, is it okay we're doing this? I, I got, you know, I really want to thank you guys because you guys are so awesome. I mean, come on, dude. This is the type of shit. I mean, this is, I love this. I mean, John Nair, it's, it's me. I'm, I'm so appreciative of it. So, all right. So, now the next stuff here. Now, Chucky Egg. Is a really cool dude. He's a he's a UK collector. I gotta put this stuff somewhere. He's a UK collector, a, a big Nintendo guy. Okay, big 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 Nintendo guy, and uh, he just picked up a sheriff. He actually has a Nintendo sheriff upright. I think he has three sheriffs. He has a Nintendo sheriff upright. Actually, let me uh, show you a picture of the, his Nintendo sheriffs and all that. So, uh, so you can see he's got the upright, he's got the, the cocktail, and then he has this kind of upright cocktail, a cabber tail, whatever you want to call it. And it's actually, I, I don't know if me and Moda actually designed the game, but it was his artwork is on the upright. He drew that vulture and all that. So it's one of Shigeru Miyamoto's first games ever. And this guy's got like all three of them. They're, they're, I would kill for a sh I mean, you know, I, I've been thinking a lot about this because you guys have asked me many times, hey, John, what's your grail? I'm going to say the Nintendo Sheriff Upright is an absolute freaking grail. And Chucky Egg's got got one. He's got the cocktail and the caber tail. But the Upright is the one that does it for me. Um, and we actually played XD Bandito. Remember that? We went to... Um, 22084 arcade um, because they licensed it to Exidy and it was called Bandito in the States uh, and then elsewhere in the world it was called Nintendo Sheriff. Anyway, Chucky Egg, super cool guy in the UK, he sends me this giant box of stuff and and I have to tell you, every single thing in this box is cooler than... I mean, I couldn't believe... When I opened this up, I'm pulling this stuff out. I'm like, everything was cooler than... I mean, it just kept getting cooler and cooler the deeper I went into it. I mean, the first thing I pull out is this. Casio. VL Tone. I mean, okay, guys, you know, I record music a lot. And I love weird synths. I've got some Casio synths. I used to have one like this as a kid, except it didn't have an LCD display. 
And when, when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, are you kidding me? In the box and everything. I mean, this thing is just screams my childhood, man. And the sounds are just, <laughs> they're just horrible, really. But today they're cool and retro and you can put them in music, you know. <laughs> so I'm gonna record a song with this. It's pretty cool. I mean, I used to have, I didn't have this exact one. I had one like this, I think. Cause it, mine, mine had the same, this song. Wait, no, 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 wait, hang on. This, uh, that, that song, hear that? I, I've listened to this song. I, I've probably heard this song 500 times in my life. Cause I had a keyboard, a Casio keyboard like this when I was a kid that had the same demo song. And I would just hit that demo and go, man, how, how, how do I do that? How do they do that? I mean, is it, you can really play that with this? <laughs> And then I think they used this in uh, like that uh, Volkswagen commercial. They used that Samba beat, whatever. One of these beats. If you guys remember, let me see if I can find it. I think that right there. Wasn't that like in a, a Volkswagen commercial? One of those beats were. So cool stuff. So Chucky, awesome dude. I mean, this thing's badass. It has the it has the manual. It has the. The, the carrying bag, the box. I mean, come on, dude. I mean, this would have been enough. But no, he, he didn't stop here, man. <laughs> Chucky, thanks, dude. Come on. So cool. All right. And then he sends me this, also in the box. A Wreck-It Ralph watch, okay, which he says was a Disney promotion. This was not something they sold in the store. This is a watch that, you, that Disney gave away to promote the movie. And you can see it's kind of all pixel and cool. You know, I'm gonna, I have to wear this. And uh, I love it, actually. Just so awesome. <laughs> it's actually totally me. I mean, come on, I can rock that, right? <laughs> so Chucky, awesome. Wreck-It Ralph watch. Uh, what else is in here? This is pretty cool. I I'm actually gonna bring this to work and use this, I think. This is a, a Timex, uh, actually, I'm sorry, a Sinclair scientific calculator made in England. I mean, look at this thing, dude. That is so awesome. So I haven't put batteries in this yet. I'm assuming it works, but if it does, I'm gonna bring this to work because that is cool, man. Look at that thing. <laughs> and of course, Sinclair, I've got the Sinclair computer too that Leslie uh, Dean sent me. And uh, we're gonna be addressing that too. I got a specky as the, uh, as the Brits call it. All right, so that, I mean, can you believe this? So he sent me this DVD, which I'm not really sure uh, what this is, but I'm going to watch it. It says the classic Carry On film collection. Now, I think Carry On is something uh, the Brits say. Carry On. <laughs> so I don't know what this is. It looks funny, though. Classic Carry On collection. I will, I will definitely give it a go. Uh, he sent me uh, Chucky Egg, the game for the Specky, for the Spectrum. I believe this is for the Spectrum. I'm assuming it's got to be for the Spectrum. And yeah, Spectrum 48K, Chucky Egg. And we're going to try getting that Spectrum going. Uh, again, Leslie sent me one and uh, uh, months ago. And I, I was going to make that a winter project, try to get the cassette player working and hooking up to a TV, doing the, uh, doing the, the mod for the composite video. Um, he sent me uh, Electronic 80s Ministry of Sound. And this was like a collection of electronic music from the 80s. And uh, I, the cars, oh, Gary Newman, oh, Gary Newman cars. So there's stuff like that. Gary Newman cars. Uh, what else is on here? Japan, Quiet Life. So this will be a fun listen. I have to admit, I don't recognize a lot of this stuff, but I, I'm sure I'm going to love it. Awesome. It just keeps going. <laughs> Depeche Mode. The best of, I'm gonna love this, by the way. And it was 16 pounds. Pretty awesome. Is this a two CD set? No, single CD set. So I'm gonna put this stuff in my car. We're gonna definitely be listening to that. Thank you, Chucky. Let's see what else. And by the way, his name's Alex. So thank you, Alex. Now he sent me this, and I have to confess, he, 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 this is supposed to be special. And, and, and Chucky, I'm sorry, I, 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 I will figure out why. 
and, and I know that this, if this is silk screened, by the way, or I don't know how this was printed, I know that these Super Mario Brothers marquees are not trivial to get, okay? And I don't know if this is new old stock or a reproduction. I, I, I don't know. If it's a reproduction, it's a very good one. Because um, I had a, a versus Super Mario Brothers marquee on uh, my Unisystem, and it was all faded uh, because these always fade. And there's reproductions out there, but they're not very good because um, they're usually digitally printed, and and this material is kind of opaque. Now this look, if this is a reproduction, it's it's spot on. I mean, it's super quality here, and uh, and it's good material. And it almost makes me want to make a Super Mario Brothers now. A versus again, I used to have one in a red cabinet. So Chucky, that is awesome. Thank you, pal. Are you guys getting bored of this? <laughs> you know what? I, I'm just... I, I want you guys to know that I'm, I'm just very thankful for this kind of stuff. I mean, I, I feel important. I feel it's important that we talk about it. And then he sent me a nice Christmas card, you know. Uh, to John and family, let's have fun this Christmas uh, from Alex and family. So, Chucky, blown away. Everything that was in that box was freaking amazing. And, and I just, I really want to thank you guys because you guys are truly awesome. And I kind of wish I would have done this video before Christmas, but whatever. This is my Christmas video. And uh, thank you, Chucky. Thank you, everybody. And, of course, obviously, thanks for the support and the donations. I got some killer donations uh the last week here and you guys are just blowing my mind so I, I want you to know it's all appreciated and it's very motivating it really is um, so I want to go ahead and, and and do some viewer mails here and again this is a bonus video guys this is a bonus Saturday video and uh, we're gonna be doing more in this week here all right so from Jeff and by the way if you guys want to send viewer mails you need to send them to blkdog7 at gmail.com that's blkdog7 at gmail.com and in the subject line please put viewer mail very important subject line viewer mail blackdog7 at gmail.com if you don't put viewer mail I can't find it all right so uh, Jeffrey Oler says hey John Two great questions for John's Arcade. What is the longest distance you have traveled to pick up a game? Number two, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most, how supportive is your wife regarding the hobby? Also, I have a great recommendation for you regarding wireless microphone. Uh, he says he uses a Sennheiser EW100 ENG uh, wireless microphone system. They provide excellent sound quality, durability, and also the settings are great for a variety of things. Looking forward to more great videos. All right, so the first question here, the longest I've traveled, I, I don't know, maybe 150 miles. I'll tell you this, when I first started collecting, I set up a uh, kind of a fictional boundary for myself. Uh, I, I said I was willing to travel 100 miles. That was my limit, because I would search on Craigslist using like Search Tempest. And by the way, it's a great tool, searchtempest.com. And I would, I would go out 100 miles. And I, I kind of said, I, I'm not going to go any further, further than that. And then it's just kind of getting stupid. Um, so I think around 100 to 150 is, is about... Now, my theater of magic, I drove all the way up to Maine. That was probably my longest hike. That was, uh, oh man, that was probably a four or five hour drive or something. That was a hike. That, that probably was my longest drive. Maybe eight hours round trip. Um, that's a little excessive, I, I think. Um, on a scale of one to ten, uh, by the way, this guys, this question, you guys keep asking me this stuff about my wife and my kids. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to tell you. <laughs> yes, I'm married. Yes, I have children. Yes, my wife is supportive. Of course she is. I, I couldn't get away with this if, if she was. My wife's awesome. We come down here a lot. We play these games together. So on a scale of one to ten, yes, ten. She is the most supportive. My kids don't really care about this stuff, to be honest, though. But, but my wife and I, we come down here and we play the games and have a drink and watch TV so she's extremely supportive and and uh, yes so you guys yes I have a wife I'm married okay and she exists <laughs> you guys, I get emails I also get uh, the emails I get the most of are about my wife uh, how she should be on the camera <laughs> I should I should have my wife and kids on an episode and also everyone asks me about what I do for a living okay and, and I, I know I've talked about this many times on on VGO I mean I'm a graphic artist okay and I, I have uh, a company called tomato interactive I do with my buddy Matt you know tomato interactive.com we do apps so I'm a, I'm a graphic designer so uh, 
And then as far as this microphone, yes, that is the microphone I want. The Sennheiser EW100. That's the one I'm aiming for right now. It seems to be the one to get. And, uh, and we're getting close. I almost have enough to get it. Not yet, but we're getting there. And I haven't touched uh, any of the donation money because when I withdraw it, I'm going to go pick that up. Um, okay, so thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, Spencer Fox. Hey, John. I've been a big fan of your vids a long time. Since around the time I bought my first arcade. Back in fall of 2009, Mario Brothers conversion. Yeah, I know. Someday I'll restore it to a wide body. Oh, I see. So he bought a wide body that was converted to... Uh, something else uh and now i know there are two of them are in chicago uh, uh, anyway my current project is a carnival from 1980 great game sega i noticed that it's starting to get to be an expensive restoration i'm kind of my own worst enemy i want this thing to look as fantastic as it can yeah i just made that word up he says as close to as original as possible you would be proud my question is though what arcade did you put the most coin in to restore, and do you still have it? P.S. I love the viewer mail segment. Long live arcade, Spencer. This is another question that I've been asked a few times. People like to ask questions about money, I've noticed. <laughs> about about uh, me spending all this money, what do I do for a job, did I win the lottery? <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed, you know, I, I'll, I'll talk about games I pick up for $50 and then I spend all that time in the garage fixing them. You know, it's a lot of sweat equity, okay? I'm I'm working hard to get these games, you know. Mo uh, nearly everything down here I, I've had to touch or restore or fix. You know, that's the secret to this hobby because if if I were to just go on Craigslist and buy these games as is, as you see them, I could, I could have never done that, okay? But anyway, it's true though that You'll spend a little bit of money to get to get the game. Like the journey is the journey's the perfect example, okay? Because I paid one hundred dollars for that cabinet, okay? And then I spent well, I spent countless hours in the garage. You know, what's that worth? Uh, I don't even want to think about the hours I put into that. But in the end, I spent a lot of money restoring that game. Maybe I, I don't I, I didn't sit down to really calculate it, but I, my guess is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand dollars. Okay, and, I, and that was spread across an entire uh, summer, really. Um, so I bought the cabinet, and I bought the artwork for was it three hundred dollars or something? So that's like four hundred, and then the and then I bought uh, the cassette interface board. You know, I, I probably in the end spent close to a grand on that game okay now that game is worth more than a grand though so it was an investment so if i ever were to sell it i could get my money back and then some you know that's the hope here and then i take that money and i reinvest it in the basement and that's kind of the cycle of life down here you know you buy the games cheap you put a lot of work into them uh you make them perfect you make them worth more than they were when you got them and then you trade them for something better and eventually you'll get the games you want and that's kind of how i got to where i am <clears throat> and it was i mean truly it was a lot of hard work it wasn't me just writing a check you know i mean yeah obviously i had to spend some money <clears throat> but this is what i spend my money on okay i don't i don't go hunting i don't have a boat <laughs> you know I, I have friends that do all those things I, this this is what i do this is my hobby I do arcade games, okay? I could do RC cars, I could do, like I said, hunting and boating and, and fishing. I don't do any of that stuff. I like this, I, I stay home, I'm in the basement and I work on this stuff. That's my hobby, so. But I, I went on a tangent there, but uh, I, I think I, I'm a little sensitive to this question because I, 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 people ask me a lot about the money and the job and, and, and all that and I mean, I've, I mean, guys, I'm doing restore videos for a reason because I want, I'm, I don't want to write the check for $3,000 for that game. I want to do the work myself. I want to save the money. Does that make sense? And the, yes, I think the journey is the game I might have spent the most on. Maybe. I, I'm not sure. Looking around here. I, I think it's pretty safe to say maybe. All right. So, uh, Peyton... Caminiti says, hey, John, I watch you all the time, and I got inspiration from your channel. I saw your time pilot video, and I had to get one. I found one, and it is a bootleg. Is it worth working on the monitor trying to find the flyback transformer for it? Now, Peyton, I kind of need more information. I mean, if you have an original monitor, I think the odds are pretty good. It's either a Wells Gardner or an Electro Home monitor. 
uh, it's probably a Wells Gardner, maybe 4900 or a Geo 7. Those seem to be the most common monitors. And you'll, you'll find some oddball stuff too. But if, if it's either one of those monitors and you know for a fact it's the flyback, I would say absolutely fix that. Now, I don't know what this cabinet is though. You, you said it's a bootleg. Is it the board? Is it the cabinet? Is it a conversion? I, I, I'd, I'd like to know more, you know? Because if it's an original dedicated game that you can convert back to something else, you might want to consider that. But if it's got an original monitor in there and it's just a flyback, you know, that's about 20, 30 bucks to fix. Might be worth it. Might be fun, too. Okay, so, uh, by the way, uh, this e I, I got a bunch of emails uh, about arcades in the South because uh, that came up a couple episodes ago. People said they wanted me to go to the... Uh, someone asked me, do I know of any arcades in the South? And I said no because I really haven't traveled much in the South. And uh, a lot of guys sent me emails to tell me about arcades in the South. And Joe Pollard said, hey, uh, he said that, uh, that I should check out, I'll just kind of paraphrase here. Uh, in response to your view mail question regarding arcades in the South, if you haven't heard of Pinball's Arcade, you definitely need to make a trip down to Austin, Texas. And by the way, I'd love to go to Austin, Texas. Never been. Uh, I'm a big Stevie Ray fan. I would love to check out the music scene down there. Uh, this is the largest pinball arcade in Texas. There are 250 games, including 100 pins. Oh, and did I mention the place is BYOB? Bring your own beer. Uh, their website is Pinball Z Arcade, pinballsarcade.com. Here's a little photo of it. Looks pretty badass, right? Well, if I'm ever in Austin, I will keep that in mind, pal. And, and and thanks, guys, for sending me all the information about the arcades in the South. I guess there's a bunch of them. Um, he's also telling me what else to do in Austin. There's barbecue, live music, food trucks, Bat Bridge, 6th Street. If you fly into Abia, he'll gladly meet me in Austin. I, I get a lot of these offers, guys. Thank you. If I ever make it down to Austin, I will let you guys know. Uh, Kevin Rowland says, hey, John. Big fan of the show, as well as Arcade Outsiders. I just got a few questions. Can you do a video explaining discharging a monitor safely and kind of general do's and don'ts for common monitor issues? It seems pretty dangerous messing with even something as a Neo Geo monitor, which is getting up there in age. What do you do as a main profession? Again, a co very common. Qu Guys, I'm a graphic artist. If you want to see some of my work, tomatointeractive.com. Actually, just go to John's. Everything in my world, I, I did. You know, johnsarcade.com, all that artwork. The kill screens artwork. Um, any other major arcade trips planned in 2015? Hong Kong was awesome, by the way. Thanks, John. Keep up the great work. Um, I have done a, uh, a a video on how to discharge a monitor. I've covered this topic several times. Go on my channel and and just search for how to discharge a monitor in the video manager, and you'll see that. And uh, yes, there will be more traveling in 2015. I think the first trip might be Denver. We'll see. Actually, this week we're going to be doing some traveling. I'm going to do some local traveling. We're going to go to some arcades. Uh, William Long says, just watched the latest video and saw you can't see the donations who they're from. This is true. When, uh, when you guys send me a, a donation on YouTube I, uh, and I go to my little account, it doesn't say who sent it. It just says money on this date, which is weird. So if you do leave a donation, please comment or tell me because I want to thank you. Um, Anyway, William Long says, um, because I love the channel so much, I decided to donate $50 towards the mic. So, William, thank you very much, and I will use that for that mic um, hopefully soon here. No need to read this on video, of course. Keep up the great work. But you know what? I did, because I really do want to thank you guys. Um, all right, so this is from John Hump. Hey, John, I've been a subscriber for over a year, and I love your channel in arcades. Seriously, you rock. Just out of curiosity, I made a quick calculation for which revealed that the total running time for all 17 parts of the Journey Restoration series was exactly 23 hours and 59 minutes and 2 seconds. Almost an entire day. <laughs> I have double checked the calculation and it's accurate. So the series is even more epic than your estimate of 20 hours. <laughs> Isn't that crazy, dude? I did 24 hours of video. And by the way, that's like f fast forwarded. I mean, I probably put over 80, to, I, my guess is 80 to 100 hours into that journey. Okay? So if I ever sell that game, I ain't making any money on that. You know, especially considering how many hours I put into it. 
Um, he says he has a question about Space Invaders. Please don't stop reading at this point. I know you don't like it because it's boring compared to most of the games that followed in the 80s, but it's such a giant in the history of arcade games that it makes me a little sad to see it dismissed so readily. I suppose I am biased. Born in 1970, it was the first arcade game I ever remember playing. It was just the most exciting thing ever. For a year or two, the term Space Invaders was used as a generic term uh, for video arcade games, in England anyway, it wasn't that big. I am sure I am not your only subscriber of my age or older or even younger who feels this way. So I don't know, just some acknowledgement or something. Come on, put this issue to bed. It's like you with Donkey Kong, you never forget your first love. Thanks to Keep Up the Awesome Work, John H. East from Sussex, England. All right, John. I agree with you because I actually do like Space Invaders. I actually loved Space Invaders when I, when I was a kid. Especially on the Atari 2600. I remember playing Space Invaders on the 2600 for hours. And now going back to it though, the game seems so simplistic and slow. It hasn't aged well for me. In the arcade game, I love the cabin, especially the Taito version with the joystick. Because there was the Midway version that had left and right buttons. And then the Taito Japanese one had a joystick. I think the game is super cool. I have considered buying one multiple times and I've talked myself out of it every single time because I'm worried that it's too slow I'm worried that it's gonna get boring quick now I would consider maybe replacing breakout with the space invaders but I think right now I have my uh, my my limit for one black and white game and right now it's super breakout and I would consider getting a, a, a Space Invaders in the future. I think, though, if I got one, I would get the Cabaret. I think the, the Cabaret is pretty cool. The small one, the miniature one. The Upright is cooler. The artwork's way cooler. It's got the, you know, the, the black light effects and all that. But, uh, all right, Space Invaders is, is a very important game to arcade history. Um, but for some reason, I've just decided I don't want to own one because I'm worried it's a little one-dimensional. Uh, and, uh, well, this one was from, uh, a viewer mail. Hi, John. My name is Mehdi, and I am from Iran. He says, I was wondering, when is your Dr. Mario video coming out? Uh, you know, I've done a Dr. Mario video. Maybe we could do another one, because I do want to revisit a lot of the Versus stuff, because, uh, my very first videos, most of them were Versus videos, and they were really crappy. The camera quality was not very good. So we might be revisiting all of the Versus games, and I'll do them in 1080p and uh, maybe 60 frames per second. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you like viewer mails, send them to blkdog7 at gmail.com. blkdog7 at gmail.com. Again, this is my Saturday bonus video, not the Sunday video. And uh, tell me what you guys think of the 60 frames per second. Uh, check out my podcast. Uh, one is Video Game Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders.com. The other is Arcade Outsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com. Um, actually, you want to play a little bit of Dr. Mario real quick? My battery's dying, though. I don't know if the, uh, the 60 frames per second is affecting that. Um, let me All right, let's go over here. <clears throat> we'll play a quick game of uh, versus Dr. Mario. Now, I, I have to tell you... Of course, I'm not good at it. <laughs> I was, I've never been good at this game. I actually find it a little frustrating, and uh, but it's a good game nonetheless, and it's an important game. It's a really, really great uh, puzzle game, right up there with Tetris. And of course, it was released originally on the uh, on the NES. I think they had it on the Super Nintendo too, didn't they? I don't know. I seem to remember playing this on the Super Nintendo. Uh, but it's a cool game, and. Uh, all right, let me. We'll play a quick game here. Throw a quarter in, and we'll do uh, virus level zero, normal. What music do you want? Fever or chill? We'll do uh, fever. All right. So basically, you gotta line up the colors, okay? And we got pills. Uh, sometimes they're uh, one color. Sometimes they're two colors. And when you get four in a row with the virus, you remove the virus. And so, buying up yellows here, and uh, this game is is actually really good. But I, I tend to lose control when I play it. Like I just I just kind of get over my head, and I can't pass it. Um, my wife is incredible at this game. I am not though. And it seems like girls in general are good at this game for some reason. But the game's awesome. The music's awesome. I know that they, she, I see I just screwed that up there. So now I gotta get rid of these junk pills by lining them up. 
Uh, see, I'm already losing control. Let's get rid of that. Okay. And then the yellows drop down here, so I just screwed myself. Yeah, I'm just not good at this game. <laughs> just This game, act oh, look at that. It just makes me angry. I cannot play it to save my life. People like it, though, man. Not me. <laughs> I like it. I just wish I was good at it. See, I, I've gotten my... In, I'm in a pickle here. How do I get out of this? Oh, screw it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's Dr. Mario. I'm just not good at it, guys. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, and we'll be doing another video tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. I don't know if I'm going to do one every day. We'll see. I'm going to try, though. I'm going to try to do a video every day for the next week. Might be a little ambitious, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, I'll see you soon. I, I think we're going to do some fun su stuff this week, though. We're going to do some little micro road trips, uh, visit some friends, and uh, some friends' arcades, and, and just get out of the house. Because I've been cooped up in the house here since Christmas Eve, and it's time to get out. So, But I think tomorrow we're going to do our year-end review, because it's the last Sunday of the year, and I think we should do it. So, All right, guys. That's it for this video thanks for subscribing and commenting and liking and if you like this channel tell your friends <laughs> so all right guys later and bye